So uh, guys, y'all heard about the UDP packet walked into a bar? It went unacknowledged. All right, that was a network joke. All right, hello everyone. My name is John Gruber. I'm with F5 Networks, and I seem to be the perennial uh, presenter for our vendor summit. Today we're going to talk about being all in. So I want you to get used to thinking of the thought about being all in, because it wasn't something F5 got immediately. This is your F5 mea culpa. You saw in the keynote addresses where they talked about the difference between getting the technology and getting the community or getting the culture. Well, we got the technology. In fact, last year we stood here and talked about our Elbaz driver. We have Elbaz V1, we have Elbaz V2. And we talked about all these operational features we have in our agent nobody else has. We talked about being able to do scale out environments, being able to do differentiate environments, all this stuff. And then we told you to go get it from Dev Central. We told you it was a RPM or a Debian package. And we said, this is how you obtain our software. And this is how you deploy these solutions. It worked. Many of our customers followed us down this journey. And they said, we should do this. And they started saying things like this. Because they were asking a very fundamental question. And that was, did we actually get the culture? And it turned out there needed to be a drastic change inside of F5 in order for us to say that we got the culture. And I'm very proud to be able to say we got it. Because we started a team in Boulder, Colorado, started over. We picked folks that had the mindset not of an enterprise networking company, but had the mindset of more entrepreneurial thinking. And we said our OpenStack efforts needed to be seeded out of there. Because we needed to be able to say something to you that we hadn't been able to say so far, and that is we are Wow, I'm glad you guys can read. Now, what that means for you is that our software that you used to download and look like this now looks like this. That's GitHub. That's better. And it's a little more important than that. Because what you're going to find out is all that code on GitHub in, in the repos that are there that you can see, we have supported code in that repo, which means you can call us. And more importantly than that, that means I can come out to you and we can make creative solutions together simply by forking the repo, doing the work, doing a pull request against our repo, get our Travis CI to kick off on this, do all of the testing. If it gets into our master branch, it's now a supported solution. I couldn't do that with you before. And in fact, we're doing all of our development in GitHub so you can even see really wonky things like when our developers, I don't know who that idiot is, um, puts bad commits in. It's all there, and you can see it. Because once again, we figured it out finally, and we're, wow, you guys are slow. Someone said on. All right, so let, let's talk about what that means. That means we now have an aggressive roadmap for OpenStack. That means we can start building the services with our customers. That means our smart customers are now taking the feedback they have from us, and they're pushing it back. We have a lot of great plans, and we're very excited. By the way, you can have the meeting we can show you this in detail and talk about it in detail. But we wanted to let you know that this is a cultural shift at F5. This is a change in who we are and how we behave with you and customers. And it was OpenStack that pushed us there. Now, what does this mean? Well, today, we have to adjust our products to be more like you, because once again, we've decided to be all in. Today, if you went and got our software plants, let's say for a second, You'd get it from downloads.f5.com. There's export controls. There's all this enterprise stuff on it. There's all these images. And what you would get is a very generalized virtual appliance that was built to work on multiple hypervisors and do all these things. Nothing that's necessarily all in about this. So what are we going to do? We're going to do what a good community member would do. We're going to take heat, non-proprietary. You can do this. We're going to take heat. We're going to take a little cloud in it. We're going to take that VE, and we're going to make it an OpenStack VE. And then we're going to put it into your Glance repository, and then we're going to publish Innova flavors. Because you can orchestrate this stuff in OpenStack, right? And any vendor that's all in should. And that's what we're doing. So we're going to do it based upon a policy file that's written in JSON, because that's kind of an OpenStack thing to do, right? And it's going to synchronize. So you can decide what F5 software you want and F5 software you don't want. Again. We're going to patch the images. We're going to publish them into Glance for you. We're going to add specific Nova flavors that look good so you're not burning out your quotas running ADCs. Now, what that means is we've transitioned our products from being generalized to being ones 
that are really OpenStack specific. They integrate with OpenStack. They pull metadata for your keys. Uh, they do security integration right with OpenStack, with Neutron. All the network service integration is there when you launch the devices, and we do our own licensing orchestration so that what you get when you start them looks like a fully active ADC in OpenStack. Let's show you this. Again, are you seeing anything proprietary here? Or are you just seeing heat templates? They're heat templates, and they're on GitHub, and they're visible, and you can use them, and they're supported, because F5 figured something out, and we are. All right, who said it? I'll throw it to the center. Oh, lousy shot. OK, and you'll notice, as these things build, all we're going to do is launch a little instance, read the policy file. We're using cloud, we're losing a cloud init instance to orchestrate this whole thing. And you'll start to see all of our software show up in your cloud. Again, we're patching the images. We're going to push them in to Glance, and then we're going to add your Nova flavors. All F5 software functionality is available in your OpenStack cloud. Let me repeat that. All F5 software functionality is available in your OpenStack cloud. So what this translates to you is we just gave you a Lego block. And let's ask, how creative can you get with a Lego block? It's a block. A little imagination later, it's a whole lot more, isn't it? And if you notice, again, you don't have to publish all these things, but you see we're publishing all of our software so it's available to all your tenants. This is an admin task, but again, it's the Lego block. Now, Lego blocks are neat, but we should want more than red bricks. Don't you agree? And F5 has a bunch of different colors of bricks. In fact, in this example, again, we're launching heat template. Notice you're setting, you're setting your, your default accounts on your appliances uh, passwords right here. But we also do a bunch of other security stuff, randomized passwords and other good things you should do in cloud. Um, in this case, however, we're not just building red blocks. We're going to build blocks this time through the heat template. And again, fully open. You guys can use these things that are web application firewalls. These don't show up as just generalized ADCs. Notice some common security group things, so we're not wasting a bunch of space. Notice the license integration. These are showing up as our ASM product, or the web application firewall. You can launch these things in pods, and we're doing all the orchestration for you. It's all on GitHub. It's all done in an open stack way. Now, we built a wall. Walls are cool, but they're not the only thing you can do, right? F5 has made a living and helping applications be better. Add a little Neutron integration, and a little more heat, maybe a cloud init script here and there. And again, all from us. Uh, even integration with our own management platform, with Big IQ. And we're going to do one further step for you. We're going to change from just doing things like walls or just doing things like load balancers to doing full clusters. Why? Because we know that's what people use F5 for. They use the F5 high availability, which by the you know, all the things you're used to seeing, I'm going to ask how hard is true availability in an open source proxy? How hard is it? This is why you have vendors. We do high availability. Do you think we should be able to orchestrate that whole high availability for you? Yeah. We can do it in active standard. We can do active, 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 active. This is the kind of company, because this is really using the ADC for what it was built for, and that is to be the platform on which you develop your application. With is the middleware that gives you all that functionality, all that business logic, all that stuff you've been doing with F5 for all these years in your OpenStack cloud. Now again, we've moved forward in our little Lego block history, and now you have full clusters, you have pooled license management, you have fully operational tenant networks coming up. Everything's ready to go. You can put the initial config on the box. You can do everything you want to do. Because again, in this picture, and we'll show it running to you, you're going to get sick of me saying this. Do you see anything proprietary here? No. This is all heat. This is all open source. This is Apache 2 licensed. This is supported. Because we figured it out. Because we are finally, yeah. All these years, I've been working to try to, try to we open stack, we got it. We finally got it. And again, watch this, we'll, we'll launch it, we'll, flow, flow the, we'll put the whole cluster together for you, we'll launch the various instances. You'll notice in this orchestration, there was only really one object, that object represented the whole cluster. Now, with all, now it's a platform, now you can build it. And you'll notice, when we look at the heat, at the heat stack, all of our heat stacks are built, so on their outputs, you'll see the output here, we output all the variables necessary to let a higher level orchestrator consume these platforms. So if you have a higher level cloud orchestrator, it's just reading the outputs from heat and programming this now ADC platform you have associated with your application. And again, we're just left the floating IP so we could log in and show you that we weren't kidding. It's actually all the way clustered. 
It's all the way done. It's ready to go. It's ready to be the platform on which you deliver your application. So now, if we go a little bit more from the platform idea, we can sit there and say, once again, we're going to add a little more heat. And by the way, heat's composable. You all appreciate that, right? So we do Lego blocks. We build them up and up and up. And we can do things like add a separate controller for things like firewall control, for centralized control of firewalls or WAFs. And we can add this whole picture together. How many uh, know what Lego Mindstorm is? That's where you take your Legos and you add some neat things and you get this remote control thing for them and you can get them to automate and do really cool stuff, right? Well, that automation is unique to Legos and sometimes the automation is unique to F5. So in this picture right here, we're going to take that same wall that we built before, we're going to build it again, but this time we're going to take those elements in that wall and we're going to register them with the centralized manager. So what does this mean? That means a cloud provider can do things like launch a WAF inside of a tenant for them and manage it back at the SOC. Does that make sense? Because who really knows how to run a firewall? It's probably the security guys in the enterprise. They can launch these within the tenant and then manage them centrally in the SOC. And you'll see it. We fire it all up. And again, this time we're building drawbridges. Why? Because these things are automated. I can move them up and down. I can change the policies. I can do all of these things in a centralized fashion. They're showing up in our orchestrator, and everything's happening. Now, I'm showing you our control panel, the thing that was on that you know, Lego Mindstorm iPad thing. But all of the integration for the infrastructure, remember the keynote address that said the infrastructure services layer? All the orchestration with the infrastructure layer is all done through heat. It's all open source. It's all given to you because we wanted to make sure we were doing it in an all-in way. Everybody understand that? Centralized managed tenant ADC services. But that's not the only thing we can do. Inside of F5, we already have a technology to do declarative deployment of complex ADC services. These are the L4 through 7 services that add the special things to your application. This is the reason why you buy F5. This is the feature set that, that keeps growing, that we keep, uh, that we keep adding to the, the feature to let specific things happen, like building a mobile application where the TCP layer is tuned for mobile networks. And hey, that's pretty neat. That's all stuff you can do with F5. Now, if we're giving you a library of functions and we have this advanced templating language ourselves, what do you think we're going to do if we're a vendor who's decided that we're all in? We're going to marry it to heat. We're going to expose all of our IAP templates through heat, which means, once again, you have full control of your F5 device. You have control of every L4 through 7 feature from heat. Is that what you wanted? Let's see it. Now, this one's kind of an interesting one because, because heat's composable. What you'll see from us is we're going to launch the whole app. And this is what you wanted. You're going to launch the web servers. You're going to actually launch the entire ADC cluster. You're going to sit there and then proceed to use our IAP integration, and we'll show it to you. This is the heat template. Notice I'm using a standard F5 IAP. And inside this IAP, you'll see custom F5 heat resources, which you put on your heat engine. There's the one right there that maps it to the IAP language for F5. And as you go through, you'll see that you can do lots of things. Here's WAN compression. There's your TCP optimization for mobile. This is for a mobile application. As you go down, you'll see SSL offloads on there. You see cookie persistence is defined. Um, anything you can do, there's message by message uh, for web applications, land optimized towards your servers, all the good things you count on from us. And you'll see it's a pretty simple thing. There's iRules. You can tack some iRules in there if you want. All your pool members, all of this is exposed through heat so that you can build orchestration layers on top of this, so that you can make this part of your application deployments in your cloud. Look what we built now. Something that'll do the Kessel Run in 12 parsecs. Add a Lego blocks, those Lego blocks from the community. And again, to show you that we're doing this, uh, we already showed you the VIP. We actually left the big IP um, self IP attached so the, in the demo so we could log in and show you everything that's been exposed. But this is what the heat template built. You'll go through and notice it's a standard template. There it is. Look at all that config. Look at all that stuff that got exposed to the template. It's all there. L4 through 7 services fully exposed to you through heat. All of the features. 
Now, one other thing I did want to show you is like all things, because you should absolutely follow the lifecycle management of OpenStack when you're doing infrastructure as a service type deployments, watch what happens when I delete it. I just deleted the stack. Notice it's changing. Watch this. What's going to happen to my, oh, it's gone. Why? Because I deleted the stack. Isn't that what you wanted? It should follow the lifecycle management for virtual functions from OpenStack. You have every bit of software we have. Every bit of functionality that F5 has, you have in your OpenStack cloud today, supported through open source orchestration. So whether we're talking to you about big old multi-tenant services like LBAS or LBAS v2 or taking over the L3 router later this year or moving into the firewalls of service for the perimeter, all those multi-tenant infrastructure services, or whether we're talking to you about single-tenant application deployments of your ADCs, it's all there. You have every bit of functionality we have. And again, it was all exposed through OpenStack means because after all these years, we finally figured it out. And I'm very pleased to say all these solutions are OpenStacky. It's OpenStacky because, thank God, it took a long time, but we're all in. Questions? So, so he asked a question about the VE if neutron breaks. Same exact analogous picture to your old data center if your switch broke. This is why you have HA. If you notice in, in the heat templates we use to launch our VEs, we actually give it a parameter for let you put it in an availability zone. So if you've set your availability zones properly, we'll make sure the VEs that are HA aren't, aren't on the same hypervisor. So if that neutron instance goes poof, if that, that agent decides and that, that soft switch decides to go away, it's the same case as you would in a physical data center if the switch went away and we failed over. Make sense? Any other questions? Anybody want to talk about anything hard we should be doing? Yes, sir. So Mike asked about setting up users in F5. And the answer is heat will follow the authorization model. The individual F5 things set up as in the tenants themselves, those are autonomous. Those are autonomous to the tenant. And there's some good reasons to have them be such. On the multi-tenant stuff, we need to talk. There's some stuff coming. But for the single tenant pieces, those belong to the tenant. Does that make sense? Their idea of what authenticates and what doesn't needs to belong to the tenant. Okay. How does licensing work? It's a wonderful question. You just saw it's blitz right through that. We have both at scale, which is what we call our internet SaaS licensing, which means the boxes go out and talk to activate.f5.com. And we have this thing called uh, it's a pool manager. It's a pool license manager that gets set up as part of your infrastructure. The heat templates themselves support both type of license orchestrations. So if you decide to put in a base key, so it's bring your own key, and it goes against our SaaS service, that works as part of the orchestration. If you have, it can point me to the license server in there, you put in the license server destination, you tell me what pool you want it to be part of, the heat template licenses the device right from there. So all of the license orchestration in both license activation types F5 support are supported in our heat templates. Does that answer it? You want us to do that. You don't want to do that. Yeah. He wants us to pay for it too. Well, you know, all things. Can we make the license server highly available? Haven't yet, but that would be a heat template thing on my side. Sounds like something you and I should fork the repo and get working. And then we could give it back to all of these guys because that's what it means to be all in. That means Mike and I can make this happen. It means I can go to you with the smart design. I can fork the repo, get it to work the way you want it to work, and we can push it back up through the repo so we can give it to the rest of everybody else. That's pretty cool. We've been waiting to do that for a long time. Well, if that's it, I've got 50 seconds I can give back. So in 50 seconds, I'm just going to throw hats. Anybody rather have a koosh ball? Whoa, heads up. Oh, got a question. Sorry, I'll see if I can do this both at once. Yes. Uh, not yet. But again, something we could fork and something we do. We have, we have a couple etcd type integrations that are doing the exact same thing. 
There should be no reason we can't get that to work. Everything is exposed through an API. Those APIs, can, you can follow the exact way we're doing through our templates to get it to work. Let's talk about what you want it to do. And again, we can push it back up. That's the power of what our culture change meant, is that you and I can have that conversation. I think that's it.